Sitting around a warm fire on a cold fall or winter night is a Northwest tradition. And some say firewood is the fuel that warms twice, once when you cut it and again when you burn it. In tonight's Oregon Century 1.5, Newswatch 12's Ron Brown takes a look at the developments that took some of the sweat out of cutting wood, many of which came from Oregon. The lore of logging runs deep in the Northwest. The image of men swinging axes and pulling long saws through giant trees is iconic. Anyone who did that work would tell you it was work with all capital letters. So when gas engines began powering those cross-cut saws, the world began to change. The drag saw enabled loggers and woodcutters to more than double their production. A couple of brothers in Eureka, California, the Eureka Brothers, uh, invented a drag saw about 1875. It was over 200 pounds, very heavy. Uh, didn't go over very well. Well, a few years later, they came up with a lightweight model. And, uh, of course, it took off and was very popular. Rex Turner of Beatty showed off this Bond drag saw last summer at the Pottsville Antique Engine and Tractor Meet. It's a gravity feed carburetor. So I have to, what I tickle it, I have to prime it. What? Which I call tickle. It's got a little spring operated thing on there. I put the bar switch in. The machine runs on a Model T coil and a battery. So I just pull it back on compression. And it fires and runs, hopefully. And so it does, usually. The drag saw could be run by one man, letting it cut another log slice while the operator splits the one that was just cut off into firewood. The bond was made in Portland, mostly in the teens, 20s, and 30s, but there were several others made in the Northwest. Very popular was the Wade, also made in Portland. They produced other models, including the Columbia and the Multnomah up until shortly after World War II. Others were larger and more cumbersome, so it's little wonder that saws like the Wade, Vaughn, and Eureka were a little more popular. Well, I think after they drug them around all day, that's a good name for them as a drag saw, but they, they cut both ways. They go backwards and forwards as they cut, and they just set them on the log, and uh, they just cut saw us both ways. There was a simpler version, this man-powered saw that built itself as a lightweight alternative to the power saws that could weigh 100 pounds or more. They haven't made saws like this for years, but when these things came out in the early 20th century, they really approved the amount of work that loggers could do out in the woods and made the work of sawing up logs a lot easier. But this was not the ultimate tool. That came with the chainsaw. The earliest chainsaw was a wolf chainsaw, and that was invented here in Oregon, and that was about that era, and it was an electric chainsaw. So not too practical for working out in the woods. Dugan collects saws and said it was another Oregon invention that helped the chainsaw flourish. A guy named Joe Cox uh, was uh, working in the woods here in Oregon and uh, using a crosscut. And uh, he got to watching and taking a lunch break there. He got to watching these wood beetles and the way they would uh, cut the wood. And so he got his magnifying glasses and he went home and, and he examined those and he designed a chain exactly like those teeth. And that's how Oregon Saw Chain came to be. Dugan says this McCulloch 430 was very popular because it was four horsepower and only weighed 30 pounds. This Russian saw from the 50s, he says, is very temperamental and unreliable. Many of the old makes like McCulloch, Pullen, Pioneer, Mall, and others have gone now. They've been replaced largely by the steel and Husqvarna. This is a competition husky. Today's saws are more powerful and much lighter. And with new environmental requirements, Dugan says they are also much more fuel efficient. Nothing like the 200-pound drag saws that open woods to gas power wood cutting. In Medford, Ron Brown, Newswatch 12. If you're really interested in chainsaw history and lore, a collection of some 1,500 chainsaws in Amboy, Washington is a must-see. The Wayne Sutton Museum is about 45 minutes to the drive north of Portland.